David Rotman along with you here to witness the finest, no holds barred talent fighters in the world. Tonight, eight fighters from six countries will go head to head in a single elimination tournament to determine who will be the world Valley Tudo champion. And of course, the super fight in Portuguese, Valley Tudo translates to anything goes, and that is true except for the following rules no biting and no eye gouging. Fighters can win a fight in one of the following ways. Submission, that is tapping out. Knockout, referee or doctor intervention. A towel thrown in from the corner. Or a decision which will happen if any fighter fight goes the 30 minute maximum. the World Valley Tudo Championship. And our first fighter into the ring tonight is a man who is massive in size, six foot four, 340 pounds out of California, USA. It is Fred the Mangler Floyd. He is the World Combat Champion, a red belt in grappling. This man loves to be inside the ring in these anything goes fighting. Of course, his regular job is that of a uh, actor. In fact, he is working currently on the new Batman movie to be released uh, sometime next year. He got into fighting, by the way, when he was a much smaller man as a youth. He was picked on by other kids, decided to pick up some martial arts that would help him along. And uh, he's going to need every bit of experience that he has in this tournament tonight, the World Valley Dudo Championship, which means in Portuguese, anything goes. His opponent hails from Holland. He is 24 years old. Dennis the Menace Brawil. 
This guy is six foot two, 220 pounds. The Deutsch Muay Thai champion in 1996, but this is his first anything goes fight. And believe me, there will be a lot of action as we get the World Valley Judo Championship underway tonight. But before we do that, John, why don't you give me quickly the limited rules that there are in this competition? Well, there aren't many rules in this fight. Uh, the only thing that you can't do is pretty much bite and uh, eye gouge and fish hooking, which is putting your fingers inside the other guy's mouth and trying to stretch it open. Of course, there are other rules that you can only hang on to the rope for a limit of 10 seconds. The first time you're told to let go, the second time a warning, the third time a disqualification. The bouts can only win, end on a knockout or by submission or in place the ring throws in the white towel. Let's go now to the ring announcer to get this World Valley Tudor Championship underway. Here's Charlie Anzalone. And partner around the world, we are live at the Bay NK Hall in Tokyo, Japan, as Rio Sports Corporation and Kaisei Japan Incorporated proudly present the Universal Valley to Go Fighting Championships. Tonight's event is being sponsored by Ultimate Nutrition. When the action starts in the center of the ring, the referee in charge, he is the current FFKA Super Heavyweight Kickboxing Champion, a member of the World Boxing Association and the World Boxing Council, from Rio de from Sao Paulo, Brazil, Sergio Bertinelli. And let me introduce the two fighters for our first Water final bout in tonight's Valley Tuto World Championships. He is a veteran of the International Fighting Championship, a veteran of the World Combat Championship. He represents Budokan Kung Fu in California, weighing in tonight at 340 pounds, Fred the Mangler Floyd. And his opponent fighting to my left out of the blue corner. He is a 1996 Dutch Muay Thai champion, weighing in tonight at 100 kilos with a record of 26 wins, 6 defeats from Amsterdam, Holland. Welcome, Dennis. The Dennis. Crowell. All right, this ought to be a great fight, both of these gentlemen are big in size. They like to get this fight over with because certainly the longer that the fight goes on, then there is a 30 minute time limit. The advantage goes to the other guy because conditioning will play a part. But you keep in mind, Fred Floyd who weighs in at 340 pounds, he's six foot four. Dennis Bawil, 220 pounds, six foot two. He gives up two inches. And Fred already puts him outside the mat. From the very start of the bells, this match is underway. The referee trying to get Dennis back into the ring and get this fight continued. Fred goes right away, looking for the knockout as they're over against the ring. Fred looking to try to end this fight quickly, Joe. I think what Fred's gonna do is try to get Dennis on the ground. Dennis is a Muay Thai fighter. He's very tough on his feet with his elbows and his knees. I think Fred's gonna throw him down and try to take it to him on the ground. Of course, uh, Dennis will try to hold on the rope and try to get an advantage without the referee seeing it as often as he can. That's right, and as they're both strikers, I think they're gonna take the time and really do some damage before going down. As Joe said, uh, the fact that uh, Dennis uh, Kwawi will try to do his fighting staying up. He wants to uh, strike blows to the face, to the body, to the legs, as he does with his knee to Fred Floyd. He's given up two inches and 120 pounds. Fred takes him to the mat. Fred mounts him, and you keep in mind, he is 340 pounds of weight on the stomach, the chest, the body of Dennis Kwawil out of Holland. Okay, right now, Ned, he doesn't quite have him in the mount. He's in the half mount. He's going to work for it. But Dennis is going to hold on tight. He knows that position. When he gets under the mount, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Fred's 450 pounds. He's a big boy. Fred Floyd, at this point, uh, has uh, Dennis Kwawil on his back trying to get uh, some kind of position Fred is. Ned, uh, Fred just mounted on top of Dennis. It's going to be a long night at this point. 
Uh, he's going to have to keep his hooks in. Don't let Dennis get out. That's it. He's already tapped out. This a very quick match here in the World Valley Tudo Championship. One minute, 41 seconds. The winner, Brett Floyd out of California, 32 years old, and he wins over Dennis the Menace Quahuil, who uh, gave up, as I said, 120 pounds and two inches in height. And we'll try to get a word here with the uh, first winner of the fight as uh, Fred Floyd very excited that uh, he got this first fight of this tournament over very quickly in less than two minutes. Let's go to ring announcer Charlie Antolone for the official word. The title of the round was one minute 41 seconds. The winner who advances to the semifinals is Fred the Mangler Floyd. And as uh, we go to uh, Howard Petzler will be our uh, man on the scene to give us the post-fight interviews as he tries to round up Fred the Mangler Floyd. Let's take one more look at exactly how this fight ended. Fred Floyd, the Budokan Kung Fu, the U.S. heavyweight kickboxing champion, been fighting for 12 years and he gets the first win here tonight in the World Valley Tudo Championship and again he'll be fighting a little bit later on as he is now side by side with Howard Petzler. Final match if he wins that to the finals and uh, try to take home the belt for the World Valley Tudo Championship so uh, nice outing for Fred Floyd again 120 pound advantage two inches in height over uh, his opponent and he certainly uh, came out uh, one uh, man who seemed focused on getting the job done quickly. Our next match tonight ought to be a good one as well. Two guys that I think uh, you're going to see a lot of fighting from. In fact, one of these was Jean's favorite to uh, take this World Valley Tudo Championship. This ought to be a great fight as well. I mean, when you look at the anything goes style and you look at the different styles that these guys all have, black belts and some kind of martial arts and then some grappling techniques as well as our next opponent comes into the ring. And this is Michael the Assassin Pachorik. He is from New York, 5'11", 220 pounds. He is 29 years old. He is a two-time All-American wrestling champion. Wrestled in college, by the way. He is 6 in old in these type of fights. And believe me, John is a guy that likes this guy and his style of fighting. Yes, I think this guy is going to charge at his adversary and don't, not give him a chance to retaliate. Also, our only uh, Brazilian fighter in the tournament. However, as I said earlier in the super fight, there will be perhaps the most famous of Brazilian fighters, and that being Marco Ruiz, who makes his return in the super fight. But then this is Danelison. Don't know much about him. He's a very quiet guy in our interviews that we had with the fighters. We do know he is six foot one, 210 pounds. He is 33 years old, so he is uh, four years older than his opponent, Michael Pachoy. He owns his own business, which is in computers in Rio de Janeiro. He has only one fight in this style of anything goes. A fight, by the way, he lost. Michael Pachoy will try to make him 0-2 in his professional career in this anything goes style as Danelison enters the ring to face Michael Pachoy and the World Valley Tudo Championship. Let's get round number two underway with a ring announcer, Charlie Anzalone. This will be round number two of the quarterfinals of the World Valley Tudo Championship. First I have, fighting to my left. He's a practitioner of the art of pit fighting. He is the two-time All-American Wrestling Champion. He hails from Huntington Beach, California, weighing in at 220 pounds. Welcome, Michael, the Assassin, Pachole! 
And his opponent fighting to my right in the red corner, he is a master of the Brazilian art of Luta Libre. He hails from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, weighing in tonight at 95 kilos. Welcome, Danielson Maia. Quickly, Joe, the difference in the, the styles, the Luta Libre versus the pit fighting. Well, the Lucha Livre, as you see, has been going on many years in Brazil. The pit fighter, Mike, has done a lot of uh, college wrestling. He's got some good experience, and he's just an overall tough guy. He will have certainly take it to, to uh, Denilson very quickly, and I think that uh, that's why you liked him so much in our opening remarks. This is the guy you picked to take this tournament. That's right, because I feel that uh, any martial artist who doesn't get the time to make anything can't, can't win. As uh, already... Michael Pachorek uh, has him in some kind of hold, and both fighters trying to look for the advantage. Then Ellison uh, trying to get his opponent to the mat. He uh, takes him to the ring ropes, continuing to try to find some kind of hold, some kind of advantage to where he can uh, put him to the mat, to where he can work his Luta Libre, which works better, I think, Joe, you'd have to agree, while he's on the mat, not standing up. That's right. Uh, the Luta Libre will start off, and they'll do some striking to soften up the opponent. And at that point, when they weaken, he's going to try to take him down. Michael's holding on very tight right here. But he just caught a uh, light knee from... Uh... Ben Ellison, 6'1", 210 pounds. He's 33 years old from Rio de Janeiro. Michael Pachori from New York. He's 29, 5'11", 220 pounds. And I think uh, right now both fighters continue to try to, to find some advantage, try to size the other guy up. And uh, What do you see happening right now, John? What I see is that they're staying close close together. That way you can feel the body of the other one moving. So they have a, you know, uh, information of what's happening. Uh, and Ellison continues to put uh, Michael against the uh, turnbuckle there in, at one side and continue to uh, find some kind of uh, advantage to uh, whether it be with the knee kicks to soften his opponent up or whatever. However, I think Michael's just trying to find that right edge, trying to find that right moment to uh, sink some kind of hold and take his opponent to the mat because, uh, quite frankly, he's given up about three inches in height right now. That's right. And, uh, Right now, they're just doing a stalemate. Like uh, John said earlier, they're just feeling each other out, one trying to make the wrong move. But uh, like I said before here, these guys are here to fight, so they can't be playing on the ropes too long. Michael Pachorek, uh, a man who uh, knows uh, quite a bit about these Anything Goes fighting, he's 6-0 and just likes to punch. Uh, he said he's not in it for the money. He says he's here because of the violence. And uh, that's the kind of thing that John liked uh, in our... Uh, pre-fight interviews, you like to hear uh, Michael talk about the, the violence of this sport. That's right, he really wants, he likes to going at it. Uh, now a little slug fast is uh, both fighters, Nelson, uh, Michael both uh, with some fists uh, to the body, to the head. Again, uh, Denelson uh, trying to get to the leg, but uh, Mike's not going to let him have it as he goes up against the ring ropes. Again, if you hold on to it uh, for more than 10 seconds, uh, that is an advantage. And uh, the referee will, the uh, first time, say you must let go. The second time, it will be a warning. The third time, it will be a disqualification. And that's one thing that you don't want in this kind of fighting. Uh, as uh, Denelson uh, now has him in some kind of ride, and Michael trying to... to find some way to get away from uh, the hold that Denelson has him in right now. Well, right now, Michael gave him the back. That's like the number one mistake to fight any Brazilian. You can't give him your back, and that's what he gave him right now. He's got to get out of there if he wants to survive this match. Denelson with the elbows to the back of uh, Michael's head, also with some fists to the face from underneath the arm. And right now, uh, how do you see the fact that right now he could use the... Uh, without the referee making any kind of uh, move right now. Nelson trying to uh, go for some kind of move right now. That's right. It's uh, pretty hard for a referee to see everything since this is a, a ring. Nelson continues to uh, wail away as the fighters now go outside the ring. They're on uh, the apron of uh, this uh, mat. Referee uh, talking to both uh, fighters at this point, and uh, he's going to uh, bring them back into the ring. And I think that's an advantage for uh, Michael Petrouk because at that point, the way that Denelson was riding him, he was not in a favorable position. Well, Ned, he used up his first liability. He escaped. He got out of there. He's only got two more left. He does that again, he's going to be disqualified. 
so he has to watch out. I think he's a little worried about the Brazilian here. Now Michael doing some action with the fist as he throws uh, Denelson to the mat. He is struck with some fist to the face. Now uh, Michael continues to wail away with the uh, fist to the face of Denelson uh, now looking to uh, have the advantage, whereas before he was at the disadvantage. Exactly. And one thing that the fighters have really have to take care of is their bodies, because they have many fights to do tonight. So they can, by hitting, they can damage themselves. So they have to be careful with that. Already, this match has gone into four minutes and a half. And uh, as you said, the winner of this fight must fight later on in, in this uh, night. So he wants to conserve as much energy as possible. However, the way that uh, this match has started out as uh, Michael continues to wail out the fist, and that has stopped it. Michael Pachorek is uh, gone, and uh, the match has uh, stopped. Janelson out of Rio de Janeiro has tapped out. He had had enough. Four minutes, 45 seconds was the length of this match. Four minutes, 45 seconds, and Janelson had said, that's enough punishment for me. But a great move from the fact that when the fighters went in outside the ring, when they went outside, Michael was uh, underneath at a disadvantage. He comes out standing up, finds the advantage in his second uh, attempt. That's right, Ned. He used up his liability and it worked for him. He got back outside. He gave uh, Denelison one good shot. He climbed up top and started pounding away. And that's what he said he was going to do in his interview with me earlier. Michael, the assassin, Petroik, wins this fight. But for the official word, let's go to ring announcer, Charlie Anzalone. The time of the bout was four minutes and 45 seconds. The corner throws in the towel. And the winner advancing to the semifinals in the first bracket of the Royal Valley Tito Championships from Huntington Beach, California. All right, let's take one more look at the punishment that Michael Petroik started dishing out to Denellison right before he taps out and said, I had had enough. All right, Howard Petzler is alongside to uh, grab Michael and get his comments about this match that went four minutes and 45 seconds. Howard? Big boost that he took the Brazilian out in this round. I think he was really worried about the guys where they have a lot of experience. I think that's going to be an advantage for him myself. John, uh, you have to like the way that uh, once he was at the disadvantage, the fighters go outside the ring. The referee decides to put him back, standing up inside the ring. And then right away, Michael Petroik says, hey, I got new life. I got to do something about it. That's right. That's very good. And I'm, I'm very impressed with Michael because from what I've seen from the interviews, I thought that he would write, he would go right in with his head down, but no, he took the time to see the openings before going in. All right, the World Valley Judo Championship continues. Already we have two fights in the books. The winners of those will fight later on, but we have two more to go in this first round of the World Valley Judo Championship, and the fighters continue to come out, show exactly their different style. And right now, our next fighter is David Hood. He is from Lowell, Massachusetts. He is 25 years old, 5'11", 200 pounds. He is of the camp of Ji Kun Do, a man that uh, certainly uh, wants to find out exactly what he has to show here in uh, this World Valley Judo Championship. He was Joe's pick at the beginning of uh, tonight to take the entire tournament. He is 73, no holes fights. He's 72 and one. Most of those fights, by the way, came by knockout. So uh, David Hood is a man that knows uh, a lot about this type of style of fighting. His opponent is from Pennsylvania and is a fifth grade school teacher. In fact, many of his students do not even know he's here in Tokyo, Japan, fighting in the World Valley Judo Championship. He is 6-0 as a kickboxer for this, his first anything goes fight. He is Todd Butler. An Okinawa karate is his style of fighting. He's 6'1, 200 pounds. So the only advantage that any of these fighters have is the fact that Todd Butler stands about two inches taller than David Hood. And Joe, right away, you like Hood coming into this tournament. Well, I like David a lot because he has a lot of ground experience. 
Um, Todd's pretty good on his feet. He's a very good kickboxer. But as you see, you have to be a little bit more rounded than just kickbox for these matches. All right, to introduce the fighters officially, let's go to our ring announcer, Charlie Anzalone. And set now to continue the quarterfinals of the world, Valley Tudo Championships. One of these young men will advance to the semifinals of tonight's championship fighting, and uh, there's going to be a lot more good fights to come. And right now, fighting out of the blue corner, he is the practitioner of the art of Jeet Kune Do. He is 25 years old. He is a freestyle fighter with a freestyle fighting record of 72 wins, one defeat. He weighed in tonight at 200 pounds from Boston, Massachusetts, David, the Boston Strangler. Oh. And his opponent, fighting to my right out of the blue corner, he is a black belt, black belt in Okinawan Karate. He is 31 years old. He is 3-0 in kickboxing, 3-0 in Muay Thai. Weighing in tonight, also at 200 pounds, from Kerwinville, Pennsylvania, welcome Todd Butler! Again, two guys that will go right to the action right away. John, how do you see this match starting out? Well, now that I know that David Hood is a well-rounded fighter, I don't have to go for him. All right, David Hood against Todd Butler. Again, if keep in mind that David Hood was one of the uh, selections for... Uh, the one that Joe thought would take this tournament as the fight is underway. Uh, the kickboxer, Todd Butler, looking to get this started, uh, trying to size up his opponents. David Hood comes up almost straight up and down. Uh, the advantage right now as they try to size each other up, Joe. Oh, they're just feeling each other out. Basic, typical round that kickboxers like to do. David just sort of feeling them out. Todd's feeling each other out. We'll see what happens. Todd, uh, the aggressor right now as he uh, goes with some strikes to the leg. Now he has uh, David trying to look for a hold. And David counters with a knee to the gut, trying to find some kind of striking distance. But uh, now uh, Todd has him uh, up against uh, the ring ropes. Again, uh, trying to find some kind of uh, advantage. Both fighters going uh, at it uh, in similar styles. I'm, I'm surprised, uh, Jean. Exactly. They, they seem like two strikers trying to you know, get in some shots, but at the same time holding the other guy. So it's offense-defense mode. Uh, Todd has uh, David a little bit off balance and that he has him up on uh, just one foot, but uh, David looking like he's just trying to find the right uh, move to uh, to sink on, on his opponent. Yeah, right now David's just taking it very calm. He's just letting Todd do his thing. He looks like he's trying to get him in the guillotine. We'll see if he can get him with the guillotine. All right, so right now it is, uh, keep in mind, David Hood up against the ropes. Uh, Todd Butler with his head into the arm of David Hood. They're trying to make the sweep of the leg, trying to get him off balance, trying to bring him the mat. His uh, hood tries to go with the back of the elbow to the back of the head of uh, his opponent, Todd Butler. Butler continues to have him up against the turnbuckle, trying to find some way to uh, get some advantage going in this fight. And now David Hood starts to wail away with the uh, the fist to the back of uh, Todd Butler's head, John. That's right. He's, um, Todd is, uh, by staying a little low, he's not seeing much, so he can't really work. Some good shots. Some great action already in this fight. However, uh, it is all seemingly in one area as... Uh, Todd Butler has uh, David Hood up against the uh, turnbuckles, trying to now throw him to the mat, trying to get him off balance. As, uh, I think uh, Todd would like to see a little bit more of his grappling style against David. There he takes him to the mat. Now he has him uh, on his back, and now Todd Butler is the man that has David Hood on his back. Sure. Yeah, right now David has got Todd in the guard. Uh, we'll now see the experience that Todd has. If he can pass his guard, he might have a chance. But right now David's in a very good position. Uh, it is uh, Todd Butler seemingly in control of this bout right now as he has David Hood on his back right now. John trying to find some kind of uh, advantage where he can start striking and start uh, softening up his opponent. That's right. And since Butler is a striker, he would really like to have his arms free so he could hit him. But uh, Todd Butler is uh, actually, David Hood is holding on so Todd's not hitting. Todd Butler again is the man on top, but uh, David Hood on the bottom. Trying to find some kind of advantage and trying to get, uh, as you see, there's some heels to the back of uh, Todd Butler's uh, back. Uh, 
uh, you know, I just think of some headbutts, uh, some striking going on, but both fighters still trying to find some kind of advantage and trying to find some way to uh, get this fight over with because keep in mind, they have to fight later. Already we're into three and a half minutes into the match. Yeah, right now David has to do some moving here. He doesn't want to waste too much time and uh, taught himself he doesn't want to stay there. They got a long night ahead of him. They have to end this match. They don't want to spend too much time on the canvas. So again, there is a 30 minute time limit, but the, these fighters don't want to go that long because keep in mind, if they win, they have uh, another match to go. And then if they win that, one other one to uh, go for the championship. So these are guys that want to get this uh, early match uh, over quickly is uh, David Hood continues to be on his back on the mat, a headbutt by Todd Butler as this uh, entire Tokyo Bay HK Hall has gone quiet as they watch both these fighters try to work their style and uh, try to find an advantage to, uh, to end this bout. And they, the fighters really have to be careful with those uh, overhead uh, punches to the top of the skull because uh, that will damage your hand. So they really have to think you know, they have some other fights coming. Todd Butler right now with the advantage. David Hood trying to... Uh, get out from underneath uh, the hole that Todd Butler has him in. Both fighters doing some work on the other ones. I see David Hood trying to get his uh, fist to the neck. Does that do much damage? At this point, he's not doing any damage at all here. He's got to either reverse him and mount or keep pounding on his back with those heels. There, a little freedom as uh, some striking goes on between both fighters. But again, this match continues to draw on. Keep in mind, the winner of this bout must fight later on, so the longer this bout goes, the more tired, the less energy he'll have for the next one as we are entering the five-minute mark of this match. This John. could be a problem for Todd. Dave's putting him in an armbar. This could be it. Uh, he got out now. Dave he starts to strike shots. Some striking going on as uh, David Hood from underneath uh, lands some blows to the head of uh, Todd Butler as they continue to find some kind of advantage. Some uh, heel strikes to the back uh, by Hood on Butler. Butler continues to have him uh, tie it up, though, to where uh, those strikes do not come from very far and thus do not have much force behind them. Oh, that was a good shot, though, to the, to the cheek of uh, Todd Butler by David Hood. Those strikes that David's given him in the back are right on the kidneys. And even though they don't seem too much, if you do 10, 15, 20 of those, they're going to cause some damage in a while here. Again, uh, David Hood trying to find uh, some kind of advantage. Both fighters now uh, wailing away at each other's face, trying to wear the other one out. And this is one match that I know both of these guys want to get over quickly. And this silence here in the Tokyo Bay HK Hall is uh, incredible. As both the, all these people around here are so in tune to the uh, the skill level of these fighters and what they're trying to do. That's right. The Japanese audience is very respectful of the fighters and will not react uh, thinking that they might de deconcentrate the, the fighters. Oh, a headbutt by Todd Butler uh, as he gets uh, some kind of force as uh, David Hood continues to wail away whenever he gets a free hand to the, to the side, the back, whatever he can do with his fist. And, Although it doesn't look like right now he has much force behind those blows, Joe. That's right. He has to get a little bit more leverage. At this point, the strikes don't really do too much at this point. He has to, uh, this is where you do a lot of submission. You can do a lot of sweeps. And uh, there's a good chance he could mount. He gave him a good couple of shots right there. But those didn't really hurt too much. John, uh, you're looking at these two guys. At what uh, point do you try to make some kind of, some kind of uh, look for a submission hole instead of trying to, to win with a knockout? Well, being a striker myself, I definitely try to go for a knockout. But uh, in this position, it's really hard to get a good strike in. And, uh, definitely, I think that the, the, the choke. Todd for, uh, Butler has David Hood looking in a very serious position as he has one arm uh, around the neck, but uh, has yet be able to put that choke hold on him, Joe. Right. At this point, Todd doesn't have anything. He's got to... Uh he, he has to get out of that guard. The guard's the best possibility for David right now, and uh, he's controlling a match from here on. Keep in mind, Todd Butler is a fifth-grade teacher from uh, Pennsylvania. He's here uh, doing his best in Okinawan karate. Uh, he is 6-0 as a kickboxer, but this is his first anything-goes fight. He's going up against David Hood from Lowell, Massachusetts, the Boston area. And uh, David stands in at 5'11", 200 pounds. Uh, Todd Butler, 6'1", 200 pounds. So very similar in size. Both fighters use their entire body, their entire repertoire, whether it be striking or grappling, once uh, looking for some kind of advantage to, to end this fight. A fight that, by the way, has gone over the eight-minute mark at this point. David Hood's doing exactly what he has to do. He just keeps pounding the back. 
That's what he has to continuously do, just keep pounding his kidneys over and over. Well, how much uh, now energy is being expended to where now later on in this tournament, regardless of who wins, is going to be uh, more tired than some of these other fighters. In fact, they're trying to end their fights much quicker than this one is. Yeah, for sure. I think that they should, you know, keep their, conserve their energy for later fights and not give as many blows as during doing them, uh, as they're doing now. Both fighters, uh, again, uh, is a rearranging of uh, a position going on. Todd Butler continues to have David Hood down on the mat. Uh, looks like David Hood has gone for some kind of arm going bar. Going for the arm bar again, Ned. See if Ned, see if uh, Todd can escape that. He Todd does. does, yep. So he, as he does, he uh, <laughs> offers a little blow to remind him that uh, he is the guy on top. Todd Butler uh, continues to have some kind of advantage over David Hood, who's on the bottom. Hood, though, continues to throw strikes with his... Uh, with his fist, with the, his heels to uh, Butler's back and just trying to find some way. There's an elbow to the back of the head. And uh, at this point, keep in mind, this match is now over nine minutes long. Joe? Yeah, well, uh, it's a long night here for these guys. It's pretty warm in here. Todd's trying to respond, but David gave him a few good shots. And uh, these guys have to end this. They have a long night ahead of them. Keep in mind, uh, it looks like somebody has uh, tapped out. David Hood has uh, come from underneath as Todd Butler had had enough. He taps out. David Hood, who looked like he was not in a favorable position, comes out the winner, but in a very long match, a match that lasted nine minutes and 34 seconds, and that is not something you want to have on your record once uh, you know that you have to fight later on tonight in the World Valley Tudo Championship because, keep in mind, as you win, you advance, and the more you win, the more you fight. And so you want to conserve your energy, but a nice uh, technical type fight between Todd Butler and David Hood as uh, we uh, continue to take one more look at how this fight ended. So Todd Butler taps out. He had had enough submission for him. David Hood is our winner, but for the official announcement, Charlie Anzalone. Time of the vote, nine minutes and 24 seconds. The winner advancing up to the semifinals of the World Valley Judo Championships from Boston, Massachusetts, David Hood. And let's give a hand to his opponent, Todd Butler of Kerwinville, Pennsylvania. So David Hood is the winner of our third match here in the World Valley Tudo Championship, and Howard Petzler uh, has him along ringside now for a post-fight interview. Howard? When you're in the guard, your physics are uh, properly aligned so the man on top actually wears himself out. He just hung in there, put some punishment on it, and Todd just couldn't hang with him. All right, uh, that sets up our third and uh, our fourth, rather, and final bout of the World Valley Tudo Championships in the uh, quarterfinals. It'll be a, what I think, a great match, although I, I'll be surprised if this one lasts much past two and a half minutes because both of these guys like to work fast and like to work hard. They will be throwing their body all over that ring in Tokyo, Japan, inside the Tokyo so Bay HK Hall. As the World Valley Tudo Championship continues, of course, coming up a little bit later on, that super fight between the Brazilian champion, Marco Uez, who is returning to the ring after a seven-month absence. He'll be fighting American Steve Jinnam. But right now, it's Scott Grom, six foot two, 220 pounds. He's 28 years old, a married man who lives in the Bahamas. He is 18 and 0 in no holes fighting, and uh, he has 17 by submission. So he knows a lot about grappling, and uh, certainly will like to go to the mat very quickly against his opponent tonight in the World Valley Tudo Championships as we go into the final match of uh, the quarterfinals of this uh, tournament. His opponent, a man who uh, this guy, to me, defines street fighter. 
When you talk about Richard Red Hood, you're talking about a man that uh, knows uh, that it goes without saying, anything goes, and he's going to use anything and everything it takes to win a fight. He's six foot three, 230 pounds, from the Los Angeles, Oakland area in California. He's married and uh, says that uh, surprisingly one day wants to be a stand-up comedian. But uh, believe me, there is nothing funny about the way that Red Herd fights in these Anything Goes tournaments. Now let's go to our ring announcer, Charlie Anzalone, to introduce our fighters. This will be the final quarterfinal bout in the World Valley Judo Championships. Our first fighter out of the blue corner. He is a submission fighter. He is undefeated and weighed in tonight at 220 pounds, all the way from Nassau, Bahamas. Welcome, Stop Raw. And his opponent fighting to my red in the in the, to my right in the red corner wearing black trunks. He's a Greco-Roman wrestler. He is a freestyle ground fighter. He is undefeated. Weighed in tonight at 230 pounds. He is 29 years old. Representing the state of California, Richard Red Herd. Gentlemen, I saw Red Herd in Kiev in Ukraine in a fight very similar to this. It took uh, one minute and four seconds. He put his opponent in the guillotine. In fact, his opponent tapped out once. The referee didn't see it, held the guillotine, and uh, got another tap. So he got a submission in one minute and four seconds. So again, I don't think this is a match that will take very long. Both of these fighters will go all out, as you can tell. Right now, Scott Groff had him in a headlock. He gets uh, red escapes. Now he has uh, Groff on the ground looking for some kind of submission advantage, trying to find some kind of way to end this fight right away. Try to get it over quickly. Scott Groff on his back. Richard Hurd has him mounted from uh, from the side. And John, what do you see going on right now? Well, I see that the, I have two heavy fighters and they move pretty fast. So, oh, now we have the, the mount or the guard? Joe? Right now we have uh, the, uh, the mounted position by Red. Uh, this is a bad position for Scott. Red's a pretty big guy. He's starting to do some damage, but uh, Scott's doing the right thing. He's staying nice and tight. These punches aren't doing anything. Red uh, going with the uh, the fist to the back of the neck, the elbows to the back of uh, Scott Groff, who uh, again hails from the Bahamas. Richard uh, Red Hurd from the Oakland, California area in the United States. And uh, right now he has it mounted. Going to start wailing away at Scott Groff. And Scott Groff is tapped out. This match is over. Richard Hurd has this match ended. The time will be, again, one minute, four seconds. I said before the fight ended, this fight in Kiev lasted one minute and four seconds. He's lasted one minute and four seconds, just like he did in the Ukraine against the uh, Russian fighter over there in an Anything Goes fight. So again, let's go and look at how this fight ended and how Red Herd got the win. Now for the official results of this fight, let's go to our ring announcer, Charlie Anzalone. The time of the bout, one minute and 40 seconds. Advancing to the semifinals of the World Valley Judo Championships from California, Big Richard Red Hurd. So our uh, semifinals is now set. It will be Richard Hurd against David Hood and Michael Pachorek against Fred Floyd. Howard Petzler alongside Richard Hurd right now. All right, our next fight uh, ought to be a good one as well as, uh, again, uh, you have a guy in David Hood who went 9 minutes 34 seconds in his quarterfinal match and uh, won with a tap out after a submission hold. We'll go up against uh, Richard Red Hurd who uh, took uh, the shortest time of any of these matches in the quarterfinals in a minute and four. He went in a submission. 
So uh, this ought to be a, uh, a great match as we get to our uh, only semifinal match that will take place tonight in Tokyo, Japan. As uh, the fighters get ready to now end the Tokyo Bay. As the fighters get ready to end the Tokyo Bay HK Hall here where it is completely sold out with people, Japanese people wanting to see this Anything Goes tournament. And the first guy to, to come into the uh, the arena tonight will be Richard Hurd. Again, he's six foot three, 230 pounds. He lasted uh, one minute and four seconds. He got the win by submission over his quarterfinal opponent. And that was uh, Scott Groff, who was uh, from Bahamas. So uh, Richard Hurd certainly has his eyes on uh, himself taking home uh, the uh, the belt here from Tokyo, Japan in the World Valley Tudo Championship. And this is a guy that I think is going to take it right away to uh, David Hood. Well, we'll have to see here. You know, Ren looks pretty confident right now and uh, could work for him, could work against him. I don't like to <laughs> underestimate anybody. He's a, it's a crazy business, this uh, no hold bars fights, and uh, anything could happen. So we'll have to see here, Ned. Next end of the ring will be David Hood. He is from the Boston, Massachusetts area, Lowell to be exact. 25 years old, so he's uh, four years younger than Red Hurt. He's 5'11", so he's given up some height, size, 200 pounds. He's also given up some uh, some weight because Red is uh, 230 pounds. But uh, the problem I see in this fight right now is the amount of energy that was expended in the quarterfinal match by David Hood. Remember, he went nine minutes and 34 seconds, and John, that's got to be a disadvantage for him, the fact that he went much longer in his fight than Red did. Oh, definitely. The, all the shots that he must have had, uh, he's hurting, I'm sure. Of course, they've had some time to, to rest, but when you've expended that kind of energy, Joe, I've got to believe that's got to be something in the back of his mind of of the fact that he knows that Red only went one over a minute long. And also, just the pressure of moving into the next round. There's, there's so much pressure here. Every time you move on one step, it's like another 50-pound plate on the, on, the, on the weight bench. All right, let's get this battle away with the official ring announcer, Charlie Anzalone. As we continue the semifinals of the World Valley Judo Championship, one of these two fighters will advance to the finals against Fred the Langler Floyd. First I have, out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks, he's a Greco-Roman wrestler and freestyle fighter. He is undefeated in freestyle competition. Once again, from Ontario, California, Big Richard Red Hurd. And his opponent, by first spot in the finals of tonight's World Valley Judo Championships, he is a practitioner, a black belt in the art of Jeet Kune Do. He has a freestyle fight challenge record of 72 wins against one defeat at 200 pounds from Boston, Massachusetts, David the Boston Strangler Hood. All right, both these fighters know that they are now one victory away from advancing to face Fred Floyd. You got to wonder who what's on their mind as Richard goes right to it. His first fight lasted one minute, four seconds in this World Valley Tudo Championship, looking to try to end this one almost as quickly as he's got David in a uh, leg hold. Le David comes back trying to strike with his leg as well. He now has mounted uh, Red Hurt. He has uh, Hurt on his back, starting to wail away at his side. And Joe, it looks like right now that uh, this is anyone's fight at this point. That's right. If you look at Red's mouth, he's got some blood coming out of his mouth. So connect uh, David connected with that strike. He's in Red's guard. We'll see what Red can do here now. All right, uh, Red uh, working from underneath, and we've already seen earlier in the World Valley Tudo Championship that uh, even in David's uh, situation, that being on the bottom was an advantage. Exactly. I guess you have more leverage being flat out on your back. So uh, Richard Hurd trying to, to work uh, something on David Hood. Hood trying to, to counter whatever Red's going to come back with. Red starting to wave away at his back, trying to to look for an opening uh, to where he can get a shot in with his fist, trying to soften up his opponent. And uh, again, this is a, a, a point where it's a, it's a chess match. Each guy looking for the opportunity to, to sink something, to get a submission, or to, to get a knockout, Joe. Well, that's right. Uh, right now, David's going to try to pass Red's guard. 
Uh, red doesn't seem to have the guy closed. He seems to have it open. And Davis throwing a few hard strikes in at Red. We'll see if Red can hang in there. Red uh, now taking some strikes. He has uh, got some blood coming out of his face. So apparently David Hood has done some damage, although his first fight, keep in mind, did go 9 minutes, 34 seconds, and uh, he has uh, already opened up a, a cut on Red's face. That's right, and you can also see that the level already went up in the second round because these guys are not wasting any, any energy. You know, they're, they're waiting for the good opening, then boom. Again, uh, definitely quiet here in the uh, Tokyo Bay HK Hall as these Japanese uh, fans are looking on and trying to see some of the strategies that are being developed inside the ring. Right, David has to watch out right now because it's possible that uh, Red could get him in an armbar. David has to keep his arms in tight. Red uh, looking for the advantage. He would like to advance to the World Valley Tudo Championship match to face Red Floyd. Get that uh, prized belt and of course the $20,000 that goes along with it. Uh, Richard had her trying to to find some way to, to get an advantage. David Hood also trying to find his way around and try to uh, get this match over with. And as both fighters trying to work their way, it's uh, two minutes and 30 seconds into it. So that's the longest, uh, in my uh, knowledge of Red Hood, that he's fought. So again, both of his matches that he's had have gone uh, less than two minutes. And this one's now over two minutes and 30 seconds long. Both these fighters looking for the advantage. Now some striking. Uh, Red trying to find some kind of opening. David trying to find an opening. Red throwing some, some fist in there. David's trying to get him up against the rings. Now Red using the ring ropes. Both of these fighters uh, trying to find some kind of advantage. If David was smart right here, he'd try to drag Red back in. Red's trying to get himself out. I would keep, uh, I'd be dragging Red right back in. Red's gonna use his liability. Good shot David. by David. David with some strikes. Red holding on, trying to keep him close so that those strikes do not have much force behind them. Now those, the fighters are going outside the ring. That will mean they will bring him back in. And instead of Red being on the bottom, now both fighters will uh, start their fight from a standing position. This bout is already three and a half minutes long. Red uh, quickly taking a, a towel to the face to wipe off some of the blood that is uh, accumulated from the uh, striking from David Hood, Hood taking his time getting back into the ring. He rolls under the mat. Uh, now uh, the referee checking the cut, seeing that it's okay. It's uh, time for the uh, the fight to, to continue. David a little uh, slow and trying to find his balance, uh, taking his time. Referee saying put the mouthpiece in. Let's get back to fighting. Red uh, now sizing him up. David sizing him up. Both fighters trying to go with the striking, the boxing type position, trying to find the best leverage. Now Red trying to take David to the mat. Now, now it is, again, Richard is on top, trying to, to, to find some kind of a submission hole, looking for the leg lock, trying to, to get a leg lock, which would be a submission hold. Am I right, the leg bar? That's right, David's gotta get up here now. Both these uh, guys, he got him. Out. He got him with the leg lock. David Hood, very upset that uh, Richard had uh, found a way to submit them again. Richard used everything I said he would. Anything goes, if it means you're at a disadvantage, you slide outside, put it back up again. That's part of what this is all about. It may look like it's cheap, but that's that counts. That's not uh, that's not a fault. That's uh, something you have to use in these types of, of fights. Well, it's, it's pretty funny, Ned, because uh, when you look at Red Hood, he looks like he caught the worst of that fight, but uh, David uh, couldn't take the leg lock. But uh, Red Hood took a beating in that one, so you have to give the little guy some credit. He took the uh, he, he took the fight to Goliath here. Red Hood, who advances to the uh, championship in four minutes, 26 seconds. Red Hood is the uh, champion of this uh, semifinal bout against David Hood, and again, uh, that's what it's all about. As we go to our ring announcer, Charlie Anselmo. The winner of the bout and advancing to the finals in the World Valley Judo Championship. Richard uh, certainly has his uh, his head cut open by uh, David Hood. Certainly worked uh, him over pretty well. David Hood may have been the loser in this fight, but uh, certainly he dealt out some uh, some punishment. And I think that's punishment that uh, Red's going to feel for a little while. That's right, and I, I hope he's going to have access to some ice back there because this might be a uh, problem for the final with one ice shot. 
this could be a problem, Red, because of uh, those wounds are too deep. Believe it or not, Big Fred Floyd might just walk away with a 30-second fight and take the whole thing home. So uh, Red Hurt, uh, as now I see doctors heading back towards the dressing room. They will address uh, Red, try to find out exactly uh, how hurt he is, how deep those cuts are. Final, uh, his uh, opponent, Michael Pachorik, in the semifinals could not go because of a broken hand that he suffered in his quarterfinal match. So Fred Floyd walks over, goes to the championship. He will face uh, Red Hurt, and uh, this ought to be a great championship for the World Valley Tudo. That's right, it's gonna be one hell of a fight. And before that comes, comes the much anticipated return to the ring of the Brazilian champion, Marco Ruiz. And believe me, people all over the world have been waiting to see Marco back in the ring. The guy he will face is the guy who won the Ultimate Fighting Championship 3. Hi, my name's Steve Jenner. I'm here to compete in the World Valley Tudo Championship in a super fight. I'm here to test my skills against one of the best fighters in the world. Tough guy, he's a striker, he does uh, Thai Jitsu, which is a combination of Jiu Jitsu and Thai Boxing. But I'll tell you, Marco Ruiz has been in the business a long time, and uh, I don't think anything's going to take it away from Marco tonight. Steve Jensen, who hails from Omaha, Nebraska. By the way, he is a police officer in Omaha, Nebraska. As uh, he weighs in at 200 pounds, he is 5'11". His wife, who is also a police officer in the Omaha area, is alongside Ring to uh, offer some support for her husband and uh, certainly does so. And no holds fighting, he is two and one. Uh, his wife supports him. Hi, my name is Marco Ruiz. I'm back. Nice, because Marco Ruiz, the uh, king of the streets, is known for the fact that he is perhaps one of the brutal guys inside the ring, but his Valley Tudo style uh, is that of submission, getting the fight over and doing it, whatever it takes. And certainly, Marco has, uh, coming into this uh, bout tonight, has all the hype that he needs after seven months off. Oh, yes. And I've seen this guy train in Brazil. He is so versatile. He can fight on the ground. He can strike. I think he is the, the best fighter in this type of event. His father got him into martial arts when he was 12 years old. He uh, looks for an opening and then works on your weak points. And again, uh, he is uh, fighting in Japan and uh, is very uh, happy to be back in the ring after this seven month layoff. In fact, many people wondered what he's been doing, but he comes back in the ring after not fighting for seven months. Looks bigger, looks tough, looks like he has bulked up a little bit. Some people tell me he's been working with weights a little bit and uh, it'll be interesting to see how he does against Steve Jenham as we get ready for this super uh, championship fight as we go to our ring announcer, Charlie Anselm. It's time, everybody, for the World Belly Judo Championship Super Fight. Our first competitor fighting to my right in the red corner. He was the winner of UFC Ultimate Fighting Championship number three. He is 31 years old. Weighing it at 200 pounds from Omaha, Nebraska, Steve Jenna. And his opponent needs no introduction to fight fans around the world. He is the six time Brazilian Muay Thai champion, two time Brazilian Valley to Go champion, the Brazilian state heavyweight boxing champion. Winner of UFC number seven, they call him the king of the streets from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Marco Ruiz. Marco Ruiz gets into the ring after I said takes seven months off to uh, work on his uh, style, to work on his uh, strategy. He looks like he is bulked up and again, Steve Jenham is no slouch. This guy is a police officer, as I said, in Omaha, Nebraska. Knows all about what it takes to uh, survive on the streets, and this ought to be a great fight. Both fighters coming in, trying to size each other up. Marco trying to go right away, trying to get Steve into a hole that he can put him on the mat, and uh, there will be no loss of energy here. Both fighters are going all out. What do you see so far? 
John. Well, I see that Marco has put Denim where he wanted. And uh, I think it's a question of time now. Joe, uh, right now, looks like uh, Marco trying to wail away with the fist, trying to soften up Steve. But again, Steve knows what it takes to survive on the street. He's a police officer. You uh, sometimes get yourself in tough situations. A headbutt by Marco. What do you see after a seven-month playoff? Does he look like he's lost anything? Well, Marco is a very diversified guy. And, uh, no, Steve doesn't look like he's lost anything. But Marco is very, very smart here. He's on side mount. He's putting some punishment in. I think he's going to try to soften uh, Steve up and then try to mount him. Steve uh, certainly looks like he's in a very difficult situation. And Marco trying to bring the, the arm back. Can't do it. Steve gets out of that. The referee very close looking for any kind of uh, submission uh, movement. The, the tap out by either fighter. Marco right now on top. It certainly looks good after that seven-month layoff. That's right. He looks very relaxed on top there. Steve Jenham certainly has himself in, in quite a situation. He knows that he comes in the uh, lesser experienced of the two. Marco known for his style, that Valley Tudo, that get in the on the ground, get into the submission, work your fighter over, work on their weak points. And right now, that's exactly what he's doing. This, uh, Steve Jenham has already opened up uh, a cut to where he has started to bleed. And uh, you can just wonder how much longer he can uh, withstand the, the punishment that Marco's doing with the fist, the elbow, it's all and over. it's all over. That one did not last very long. Marco comes back after a seventh month layoff, and it takes him only one minute and 45 seconds to put away Steve Jenham, who has got his mouth open with blood. Steve Jenham is put away by Marco Ruiz, and of course, there will be a very special belt presentation for uh, the king of the streets, who has uh, come away the winner tonight in this super fight in the World Valley Tudo Championship. Marco trying to show off a little bit to the crowd. He knows that uh, it's been a while since he got in the ring. It didn't last very long, but then sometimes it doesn't need to. For our official results, let's go to our ring announcer, Charlie Anzalone, who has the time of the fight. And of course, our winner, Marco Huez. The time of the bout is one minute, 45 seconds. The winner, the king, of the streets from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Marco Rua! Well, it looks like we're about ready to get started, so I guess Brad Hurd has decided that uh, he will go on and there will be a championship match here in the World Valley Tudo. So uh, that'll be uh, great to see. Any thought about uh, these two guys and their styles? John, about uh, the style of Fred Floyd versus the style of, of Red Hurt, uh, putting aside the fact that Fred uh, has had very little time in the ring tonight? Well, I think that uh, as uh, Fred told us in his interviews, he's going to use his weight, and he has, so, he has done so very good, uh, very well. Fred, uh, of course, the Budokan, Budokan Kung Fu, and Joe, that's a very physical type fighting guy who will strike and uh, try to keep his opponent up, but then again, if he can get his opponent on the mat, if he weighs in at 340 pounds, the advantage, I would think, goes automatically to Fred Floyd. I think Fred Floyd is going to take it right to red. I think he knows he's uh, wounded, and he's going to go for the kill right away. Fred Floyd, he's a big guy, six foot four. I'm here at the finals. Now it's Mangler time. It comes through the smoke enter the Tokyo Bay HK Hall here for the championship fight. The Mangler getting ready to decide whether or not he can be the ultimate champion here in the World Valley Tudo. Well, he's taking his coat off. That means he's ready to fight, and it looks like uh, Big Red's going to come out. So, uh... Red Hurd is, again, the only guy left to get into the arena for our final fight of the night. Red Hurd, out of California, giving up, holding an inch in height. He's 6'3", Fred 6'4". In size, though, what a big advantage for Fred Floyd as he is giving up 110 pounds over Red Hurd. Red Hurd looks like he is none to worry. Okay, I got one fight left. I'm here to win. Period. Cuts that were inflicted by David Hood early on in this tournament, and that Red Hurd knows that he's ready to go all out. He 
wants that $20,000 and of course, the World Valley Judo Championship belt. Red Hurt coming around the ring and about to enter for this one last match. This one for all the marbles here in Tokyo, Japan. And what a week we've had here. The fans have just been fantastic here tonight in the Tokyo Bay HK Hall. Let's go to our ring announcer one more time, Charlie Anselm. Are you ready for the finals of the World Valley Tudo Championships? Our first finalist is in the blue corner. He represents Budokan Kung Fu. He is from the state of California. He weighs 340 pounds. He is Fred the Mangler Floyd. <laughs> and his opponent, out of the red corner, wearing black trunks, Weighing in tonight at 230 pounds, he is from Ontario, California. He is back, Richard Red Hur. And the referee for the final bout of the World Valley Judo Championships from Sao Paulo, Brazil, Sergio Bertinelli. All right, this ought to be one great final fight here. It's Red Hurd against Fred Floyd, and this, believe me, will be a all-out bout. These two guys know that it takes physicalness to get this final bout over. They've been in the ring already earlier tonight. This will be one thing where they take it to each other, and Fred does right that. But look at Red. Red's already got on top of Fred Floyd. Red uh, trying to get something done, but of course, Fred has him, though, in some sort of headlock. Joe? Well, right now, uh, Fred has him in a headlock, but he can't do anything because Red's on the side. If Red mounts him, Red's on top. But this could be tough for Fred here. Red trying to, to inflict some damage with a fist to the head, although the uh, cut that he, had, he got earlier has already opened back up and he's starting to bleed again. That's right. And uh, I guess from the opening, uh, Fred really did what he, the best thing he could do, which is to get put on the ground. So, uh, Red has him mounted, uh, has uh, Fred on the ground. And of course, uh, when you're the, the smaller of the two, giving up 110 pounds, that's the way you want to be. You don't want to be the the, uh, the heavy guy on top of you. You want to be the light guy on top of him. Well, Red's doing some smart stuff here now. Red's trying to pull him back into the ring. He knows that he's got uh, two liabilities to get out. And if I was uh, if I was Big Fred, I'd be getting right out of there. Boy, they both start wailing away. It's elbows, it's fists. Both fighters trying to get this over with. And again, it is Fred, bloody. He's uh, got blood coming from the cuts that he got inflicted earlier. Fred now has it uh, on him. Both gonna, these guys have been checked. They're gonna check him out here. They're gonna check him out here. This could be the end. The referee has called for the doctors who are alongside to, to check the cuts. There is uh, blood on the face of Red Her. There's blood on the chest of uh, Fred Floyd. In, uh, uh, doctors now taking a look at uh, just how uh, serious the cut is to Red Herd and whether or not he can continue on. That's right. That's a good thing that they, the safety issue. Of course, Red's trying to say, yeah, let me fight, let me fight. The referee over there in the corner, the doctor uh, taking a look at him. Red saying, yeah, let me fight. Uh, although uh, it will be up to uh, the referee and the doctor's decision. It looks like uh, they're going to continue on. It looks like... Uh, Pretty much that uh, they're going to let these two guys uh, fight. Of course, uh, Red saying, yeah, I want to go, I want to go. Just a little blood, don't worry about me. Yeah, well, um, you, want, uh, you want Red to be careful here now. Big Fred got no blood on his out there. It's, uh, it's all Big Red, so uh, see what happens. Actually, Fred lucked out because uh, Red had him mounted. Of course, that first oh! part, Fred goes right for him. That first part went uh, just over a minute and a half, and now uh, Red and Fred both uh, tangled back up pretty much in the same position they were before. It's Red on top trying to get some kind of a uh, submission type hold on the bigger Fred oh, Floyd. This is very now bad, has, uh, very bad. Red this has him in the chokehold. That's it, it's all over. Big Red, Red Bird has uh, won the World Valley Tudor Championship. The time, one minute, 47 seconds. He is $20,000, Richard, of course he will get the World Valley Tudor Championship belt.
Fred Floyd had not had much time inside the ring tonight. Had to fight only one fight previous to this one, but uh, once Red had him uh, behind him, had the choke hold on, you saw pretty much it was going to be over quick. Well, that's the way that you have to be. Uh, that, that's the only way that you can beat uh, Floyd. You get on his back, you choke him out, and the one thing that he could do, he didn't. So uh, the savvy street fighter himself, he pulled it off. He looks like a warrior there right now. He's, uh, it looks like that's how a champion should look. He's got the check in front of him, and uh, that's that. He is $20,000 richer, and uh, John, uh, tell me what you saw in, in the, the strategy going on for Red Hurt. I saw that Red did the best thing that he could, which is to cancel all the hits from uh, Floyd, and that worked perfect for him. All right, now for the official word from inside the ring, for the final time tonight, from Buffalo, New York, Charlie Anzalone. The winner of the World Belly to Go Championship, winner by submission from Ontario, California, Richard Red Hearn. And presenting him with his championship crown this very week, on the Penta, producer and chairman of Real Sports Corporation, and presenting him with his 20 from Ultimate Nutrition. We're going to let him say a few words. The Executive Director, Mr. Frederick T. Gilham.